Okay, the next bread we're going to make is a pan de campagne. Now, forgive me if I've mispronounced my French. I didn't really follow on the lessons too well. But this is a bread that every bread breaker should have at least known to try once. And you can get some really, really nice tastes out of this. And you can go a bit off field and a bit too bitter and a bit horrible. So I think this is a really nice flavoured bread with this recipe. But as I said, some people might want a bit more rye, a bit more intensity, um, and that can go really well with a complement of a nice cheese or something like that. But this, how we're following this recipe, should be a nice little all-rounder. So, we're going to start off with, there's going to be three different types of flour, plus we're going to get our hands on our nice lovely sourdough that we started making the other day. And this is now come to life. And I just love it and seeing those bubbles on the side. Now, for this, for some reason, I've decided today to use some bottled water uh, from the spring um, in Tesco's. <laughs> and uh, it's that, and because it was chilled. So we're going to use 189 grams of water, or 190 if you like. Next up, let's chuck the salt in here, which is six grams. And then we'll whisk. Start off with our flour. Now, really we want to be using some T55, T65, some proper French flour. If you haven't got that, then I've got, or I haven't got enough of it, in my case, then I'm using some uh, organic flour that's uh, similar in terms of flavour and it might actually add to a bit more strength in the dough. So, we're just gonna use any old flour, really. Okay, so that's 225 grams of white flour, white bread flour. Next up, a bit of wholemeal. And we don't want much of this. And then we've got some more dark rye flour, again. 38 grams. Just want to break down as much salt as we can, just so it's easier when we're kneading. Yeah, that's pretty much gone. Okay, next our lovely sourdough. Now, so much of the flavour of this dough is going to come from this sourdough. So we're going to put in 132 grams of this lovely sourdough. Next up, I'm just going to clear the table and then we're going to start mixing our bread together. Okay, so ingredients are put away. We've just got our timer, our wet ingredients and the dry over here. So we'll chuck this in here. We're going to set a timer for seven minutes and then we're going to start mixing it together. You could add yeast to it if you wanted to speed up the process, that's fine. Um, now what we're going to do with this though is we're going to develop it um, over a period of a couple of hours, two to three hours, and then we're going to shape it and leave it in the fridge overnight to prove naturally in the basket, and then bake it off in the morning. It's not really the way I normally do things. Normally I would uh, retire first and then prove at the ambient temperature, but I want this bread to fit in with everyday life. So this is the process we're going to do. Uh, tonight I've got the sun coming around, girlfriend wants a night in and that's so this bread's going to be done before they get home. I quickly mould it while they're about and in the morning I get up early, chuck the oven on, go back to bed, make a coffee while that oven's on, heating up, um, I then get ready, 
and then chuck the bread in the oven. And then we're going out for a day out tomorrow. So this bread will be our sandwiches. Okay, so though we've needed it now for about seven, just over seven minutes, um, quite happy with that. It's so warm now. So in between our slow and our fast mix, we're gonna have to put it in the fridge. It's sticking everywhere. Um, and that's because of the sourdough being out ambient and that was the main part of the ingredients. The flour was out ambient, it's the main part of the ingredient. So subsequently, even though we chilled the water, it just wasn't enough. So next time, I would then look at putting ice in the water to really bring that temperature down to zero if I could, um, or chill in the sourdough for a little bit, it's a little bit risky. So anyway, it is what it is. We will make do with what we've got. So this bread dough is gonna be absolutely lovely. I'm sure of it. Let's put this in the fridge now for 10, let's put it in there for 15 minutes, bring it out and then we'll hard knead it. All right, so our dough has now chilled in the fridge for 15 minutes, and now we're gonna start kneading it. And you can feel the sourdough has already started working on this dough. It's beautiful. So, I'm just gonna knead this for seven to eight minutes. Won't go too mad because we're gonna be ended up overnight. We're gonna leave it to Okay, now as that time went on, I can start feeling the dough really wanting to hold together. It's got some nice strength in it, so that's really, really good to see. So, so in the bowl now, we're going to cover it, put it in the fridge for an hour, then we're going to stretch and fold it. Now you may recall the banneton that we use for the sourdough bread. And for this bread, again, we could use one of these, and I have done many a time. Um, be tempted to use a cover over it, um, just to soften the rings perhaps. But hey, it's down to artistic choice. But this is actually a bit of a money saving idea because you can pick these wicker baskets up for a pound, two pound, a couple of dollars, really don't cost too much and they come with the liner which is actually a really durable thick liner um, so it's kind of a no brainer would you pay 10 15 pounds maybe more plus delivery for these or would you pop down the pound shop and get one of these now these generally do bigger weights this is a slightly bigger weight dough than i think that one was it's about 650 grams so it will look fairly small in here but it's going to get a nice shape it's going to get the bottom of it and we're going to bake in these for a change. Okay, so we're going to take it out of the bowl and just do a fold into a ball. And then we just leave that to rest for about five to ten minutes. Right, so we get our basket ready, we can go on the side. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing again, just flatten it out and then fold from the top to the middle, taking the longest edge, bringing it over. And then cupping it down. And there you go. You can sit in there. And then we're just going to cover this and pop it in the fridge and leave it overnight. Okay, so our dough has been left to rise overnight. That's nice and, nice and ready now, so we can tip it out. And we're going to do a hashtag cut, which is quite a common cut, so it's basically across each side. One there, and one there. And that will go in the oven with plenty of steam and should be ready in about 40 minutes. 
we'll check it halfway through. So start start at 230, but we'll check it and maybe bring it down to 220 if we just want to get the core of it baked through. Okay, so our Panda Campania is now out of the oven. Look at that, it's nice and crispy at the top. It's lovely texture. I can't wait to eat that. A nice bit of strong cheese that'll go down really, really nicely.